Oi friends, today we'll be creating our weapons into items so later on we can use them in our inventory that we did not make yet. Last time we added these weapon animations that look pretty fucking cool as you can see and we have the running, we have the walking, we have no jump animation but I want it to be that way. And again, these weapons are free on my Patreon, there should be a link in the description, at least for the Patreon. To turn these into items, we're going to use scriptable objects. And if you've never used them before, they're not that hard to do. Maybe a bit hard to understand, but you'll be fine. I believe in you. In order to create weapon items, we're going to first create a general base item script. So I'm going to go into my scripts. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this one items or something like that. And inside of there, I'm going to create a new C -sharp script called item open it up delete the base functions this item will not be on any given object in the world so we can delete mono behavior like this this is just gonna be kind of like a, our own variable of sorts same as we have float vector 3 this variable will hold some other things for example it will have a public string where string is basically text uh, that I'll call name. So each item will obviously have a name. Each item will also have some kind of an icon. So I'll go pub public sprite and I'll call this one icon. Maybe you want some kind of a description. So I'll as well add a public string description. Also, we want every item to be able to be used. So I'll create a new public uh, void called use. Now, we could leave it like this, but then we can't override it. So I'll create a public virtual void use. And this will allow us, for example, if we create a weapon that derives from item, we can override this use method. And for now, let's just say uh, debug.log. And I'll, uh, I'll, say, I'll say name and then plus and then like this was used. And I'll end it like that. And now it will print out the name and add was used so we will know which item was used and it will do that in the console in unity each time we use the item you don't have to put anything in here it's it's fine this is just for debugging debugging pur purposes i can't speak today good okay but now we can't really do anything so let's create a weapon from this let's go into unity and let's create a new c sharp script and i'll call this one weapon open it up as we already said we want this to derive from item so instead of mono behavior I'll say item but it's still not a scriptable ob object so you can go back to your item and inside of it just add scriptable object here and now all of our other items will be scriptable objects as well so basically it's deriving from our item and it turns itself into a scriptable object I first want to show you how you can create a weapon. So I'll go up here uh, up above the class and I'll create asset menu and inside of it I'll say file name and I'll say new weapon and then I'll also want a menu name or menu name is equal to item items. Oh, you have to start it with this items slash weapon just like that and now this is gonna allow us to do something really cool which is go into unity and let me just show you real quick if you right click go create and then you'll find items and weapon and it will allow you to create a weapon scriptable object and you can see it has a name description and icon from the item script and now we can add more to this weapon for example ammo count range game objects all sort of all sorts of things but if you wanted to create maybe like a health pack, you would also make it derive from item and name the class something like uh, food or regen item, something like that. Hopefully you understand that. So for the weapon, I will need some kind of a game object. So I'll go public game object and I'll call this one prefab. Also, all of our weapons are going to need some kind of a ammo count so I'll go ahead and say public int ammo count 
or we can call it actually magazine size. So how many bullets are in the magazine? And then we also want the amount of magazines that we can hold. So I'll go public int magazine count. So how many magazines we can have and how many weapons or how many bullets are in one magazine. I'll also create a public int or this one can be float and call it range. So for example, for a melee weapon, we would only give it like a five range and for a sniper, it will have like 150 or something. Okay, but I also want to be able to see what kind of a weapon it is. So under public class here, I'll go ahead and create a public enum and I'll call this one weapon type. And you can use these brackets like this and then maybe create like a melee, a pistol, a, a AR, I'll just call it an AR here, a shotgun and a sniper. And then up here, I'll create a new public weapon type. So we basically created a variable here and I'll call this one weapon type, just like this. If we go into Unity just to see what all these do, if I create just a testing weapon, just like that, you can see it has a magazine size, a prefab, which is the game object that we're gonna spawn into our hand, magazine count, range, and for weapon type, you can choose which one it is. So this one would be, I don't know, maybe a, a shotgun or something. Of course, we're gonna need a lot more variables in here, but this is just so I can show you, you know, how this is gonna work. Let's try and create a weapon object for some of our weapons. So I'll go into my assets, I'll go into resources, and I'll create a new folder for scriptable objects. And inside of it, I'll start creating my weapons. So I'll go item weapon, and let's create a M1911. And now the name, again, M1911. For the description, a cool pistol. No, it's a sexy pistol. That was a test. It's a sexy pistol. For the icon, we did not make yet. I'll show you how to do those as well right now. For the prefab, we already have one and it's called M1911. And if you click them, you can see there's two of them. But one is located in prefabs and one is in FBX. And you want the one from prefabs, just like that. Magazine size, I'm not sure which one it is. But let's say like 12. Magazine count, let's give it like four so four times 12 that's how much ammo it will have and range let's say i don't know 75 for the weapon type we'll go pistol okay let's uh create some icons right now so the best way i found is to create a new scene in uh in unity so i'll go into my scenes folder right here and i'll create a new scene and i'll call this one icon scene I just want to have it in a different one. It's easier to organize. Okay, I'll create a, a empty object and I'll call this one item holder. Make sure it's zero, zero, and zero. And for example, you can go to your prefabs now and we have our M1911. I'll put it in there and make sure that position is zero, zero, zero as well. And now I want to take the camera and bring it much closer. So the camera can be at zero, zero, and then maybe like minus. 0 0.5 just so we have the weapon in there okay um, but you can see that the background is not really good so I'll create a plane that you can call it background whilst we're here okay and then I'll set the position to 0 0 0 I'll rotate it on the x-axis for 90 degrees and I'll move it a bit back but you can see it's uh, transparent so actually Rotation on the x-axis should be minus 90. And now you can see we have a nice background for it. I don't like the color, so I'll go into Materials tab, create a new material, and I'll call this one like uh, Background Matte, something like that. And I'll drag it onto the plane. And now we can change the color to completely green. And in order to do that, just bring the red all the way down and blue all the way down, and now we have completely green. And also decrease the smoothness because it can fuck up the color, color a bit. Uh, at this point, uh, you can try and move the, you know, the, the camera to the center or something like that. But it's fine like this. Uh, so, uh, you will also need a 
photo editing program, you can use something like GIMP, you can use something like paint.net or something like Krita. I will use paint.net because I like the uh, simplicity of it. I'll leave a link in the description for it as well. So what I'm going to do in paint.net is create a new file and I'll set it to be 1024 by 1024. So a square. And I'll press Ctrl A and delete. And now I can go into Unity, press Ctrl or Shift space uh, with hovering over uh, this game view and it will maximize it. And then you can press either print screen if you have one monitor or alt print screen if you have multiple and it will just print screen this one. And then I'll go into uh, paint.net, paste it, keep canvas size and now you can place it wherever you want it. So for example, I want I want the icon to be a bit bigger so we can actually see what it is, that it's a, it's a gun. Something like this probably. And then you can press Ctrl D to deselect. Select the magic wand tool in the top left. Select something green, uh, actually shift left click to select. And then you can press delete. And now we have a nice transparent icon that you can save. So I'll go file, save as. I'll create a new folder for icons maybe. And I'll call this one M1911 under uh, underscore icon. And I'll save it as a PNG, save as, okay. And now in Unity, we can go ahead into our resources and create a new folder for icons. And in there, you can drag your newly created icon. I'll drag it in. And what you have to do is change from texture type to the de from default to sprite and then click apply and also change the max size from 2048 to 1024 because that's the size of our uh, image so we don't need it to go any higher and now in your scriptable objects you can click this little circle right next to icon and select m1911 icon now this step these steps you would repeat for every weapon i'll show you quickly again how to do it make sure you save that scene okay let's import maybe a shotgun so I'll go to my FBX weapons and in there I'll find my Remington 870 I'll put it in there and now this is only a FBX again model turn off import blend shapes visibility cameras and lights click apply for the rig ch uh, choose generic and create from this model animation check uncheck it and materials none now drag it into the scene it will need the material so the base palette material so it has some nice colors it will also need a controller but we're not doing that right now and also I'll just drag it into prefabs weapons folder original prefab and now I have that as a prefab as well I can delete it from the scene and I can go into my scriptable objects uh, create a weapon I'll call this one Remington 870. I'll set the same name. A powerful shotgun. Prefab, I'll choose the newly created one. Make sure it says prefabs in here. Magazine size, I'll say like 6. Magazine count, I'll say like 6 again. Range, let's say 50. Weapon type, shotgun. And now for the icon, go into your icon scene. Make sure you save this one. I'll, I will hide this M1911 and I will drag in my newly created Remington prefab and make sure the position is 0, 0, and 0. And if it doesn't uh, clip, it, well, if it's, if it's clipping the camera, you can just change the scale. I would recommend doing it with this tool up here. Press F to find the weapon and then just hold this middle one and you can move the move it in position properly press shift space onto this alt print screen shift space again now it can be a bit bigger so it doesn't lose any detail so i'll just go ahead and set it to like 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 i think that's a bit better shift space alt print screen go into uh paint.net file new 1024 by 1024 Control a delete Control v to paste keep canvas size Put it in here and get the proper scale for it now i will rotate mine a bit to the side like this because i think it looks a lot better like that 
we can see more of the gun really and then I will remove the green by shift right clicking and it will select all the green in the image and then also you can use the eraser with a higher brush width to delete the rest make sure it's empty and now go file save as and I'll save this one as Remington 870 underscore icon okay go back into unity go into the icons folder and in there just drag in the newly created icon make sure it's a sprite here and it its max size is 1024 go back to your scriptable object and set the icon to the newly created one and go back into your scene save and like nothing happened you will have to do all of this for all the weapons next time we'll be creating the inventory and starting to get down and dirty with some code Next time we'll be creating the inventory and that's probably one of the biggest parts of this game, the hardest part. Until then, I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something new, bye bye.